All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. And uh, whenever this guy is on here, you know it's uh, something big is going to, well, we're going to talk about something uh, pretty huge today. Of course, I'm talking, uh, Ben Schneider is here. Uh, of course, the channel's opinionist and also the, um, uh, also my former colleague at Grid Network. And of course, he'll be covering this week's NASCAR races at Sonoma. Uh, and also Arca West race for uh, lastcar.info. And of course, he was also at last week's uh, Arca West and Xfinity race at Portland for Grid Network. Uh, before we get to the big news today, uh, hi, Ben. How are you? How's uh, how's the West Coast going? It is going well. It's my own version of the double, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, being with Grid at Portland, then being with lastcar.info at Sonoma with Brock Beard. Uh, you know, very grateful to have the opportunity to get this trip in again this year as you can tell i've got a slightly different background than i normally do although uh in case we got to get my get get me back on this show uh when i've got my uh new england massachusetts background again because of course i just recently relocated there as well so um you know been a busy time in my life but still happy to be able to make this work and uh looking forward to the races this weekend out sonoma should be a lot of fun to be back out there again absolutely uh we are not talking about racing today the reason why ben is on here is because there is a major story that of course that broke today um, if you haven't heard, uh, the world, uh, we've kind of talked about this, uh, on this podcast, but ben, Ben's been on here a couple of times, but the, uh, the, probably one of the biggest story, if not the biggest story that I can remember in really the history of all of sports, um, that, that just basically shocked everybody, uh, the PGA tour, uh, along with the European tour, the DP world tour, and the, are merging with live golf or the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia. Uh, so those kind of entities are the same to create one big world golf tournament, uh, which has caused um, reaction on both sides. I know this is something I know you've been following for the last year that this has been announced. There's a lot to pack into this. And nobody, and I mean nobody knew about it except for the four people that negotiated the deal um, and all these different things. And I mean... Everyone found out, including the golfers themselves, found out when we all did. So, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, Matt. Well, let me tell you, and and again, kind of going to sound like a broken record here. Um, yeah. There are very few issues in this world. Um, you know, certainly some there are some moral issues where you have to put your foot down. But I always try, whenever possible, to at least understand where both sides are coming from. Right. in an argument. And I think a lot of people looked at this as just, you know, live golfers selling their souls for Saudi blood money. And let me tell you something, I, I've never been offered 100, 200, 300 million dollars or whatever some of these guys were were getting offered here. Um, you know, I, I'm thinking of the world of soccer as well, Cristiano Ronaldo and the deal that he's got right. to go play in the Saudi Pro League. Where's Lionel Messi going to go? There are rumors of him going back to Barcelona, maybe coming to MLS with Miami, but he's got an offer on the table for twice as much to go play in Saudi Arabia. So who knows what he's going to do? He's got the tourism deal out there, which I think is, is kind of separate to, you know, where he would want to play. But again, that's a conversation for another day. Um, as is the conversation, you know, in the world of formula one racing in right. Saudi Arabia and putting on a race there. But when it comes to this specific golf issue, uh, if I were a PGA golfer today, I, I don't know if words could describe how livid I'd be feeling here because you've been told by the PGA, by Jay Monahan, that the the question that he asked was basically, have you ever had to apologize for being a member of the PGA Tour? Because yeah. the public perception surrounding Live Golf, I think a lot of players looked at that and said, you know, we already make enough money here in the PGA. We're very well off anyway. It's it's not worth going over there to, you know, secure the bag for lack of better terms and, yeah. you know, all that stuff. Um, but then to have the news come out today that, the commissioner apparently, um, you know, is a little bit of a hypocrite, maybe just a tad bit uh, selling the entire entity so that they can merge and, and reunify golf again. And let me be clear, you know, people brought comparisons up to the card IRL split. Never a good situation when your sport uh, is is split with two different entities trying to compete against one another right here. So from a strictly golf perspective, I think it's a very good day, you know, that everybody's going to be under one umbrella again, competing together again. The world's best will be going at it without you know, the question of, you know, he, he won this tournament here, but half of the best golfers were over in the other league. And, you know, we can finally put those discussions to rest, but from a, from a moral and a business side of, of things here, 
Um, you know, you, you just kind of have to sit back in amazement at, at the the PGA players who now have to look at their live counterparts who will now be reunited with them after having secured their bag and the multi-million dollar contracts they had to go play and live and really only sacrifice what one year of their careers. If that, you know, cause he still got to play in a lot of the major tournaments and they work deals out to keep the field together for those. So again, I, I'm no, I'm no expert in golf no. like I am in the world of racing, but um, I, I can certainly point out hypocrisy when I see it. And in the case of uh, the PGA and their commissioner, Jay Monahan and, and everybody involved in that deal there, the fact that golfers were getting on Twitter and saying, we did, we heard about this the same time everybody else did through Twitter. We had no idea this was going on. Um, you know, I, I know people, people criticize Roger Goodell. People criticize Rob Manfred, Adam Silver, Gary Bettman, Don Garber, the Steves, Steve Phelps and Steve O'Donnell over on the NASCAR side of things. But I, I think Jay Monahan is, is clearing all of them by a mile in terms of how Haiti he's going to be within uh, the world of his individual sport, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. I don't know what he's going to be able to do to regain public trust after this, because this is this is uh, an absolute PR nightmare for everybody at the PGA. Absolutely. And I think it's one that they created uh, of their own doing. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, you look at, I mean, they had a meeting today with the players and, you know, um, I don't know if you watched um, the Golf Channel today, but um, and if you did, and I want to shout out them. They did a, I think they were on the air for like two hours without taking a commercial break or something like that. And they had basically everybody from that they could find from the golf world to come on and give their thoughts about this. Um, but in the position from some of the experts I heard, obviously the two most obviously outspoken about this are, you know, you got Eamon Lynch and then Brandel Chambly, of course, both, um, you know, both contributors to there. And obviously those two gave their thoughts today. Uh, I don't know uh, people like that. How are they going to handle this? But, you know, the, the meeting today with Monaghan was like, I think one of the golfers said it was like, maybe the, his guess was like a 90, 10 split. And everyone was like, Oh, we need new leadership. I don't know how he survives this. It, it's like, you're saying one thing like 10 months ago and then you go and then do this. It's like, I mean, here's the thing. Both sides are getting sued on different issues. So they probably thought that, okay, let's combine together so we don't have to do any of this or something. And I don't know, looking down the road, like five, 10 years, we think, hmm, maybe this could actually work out. But obviously, I think a lot of people are going to have a problem with where the money is coming from. Um, and it's obviously a case of where we could see, you know, in other sports, what, like what's stopping them from getting in other things. But obviously, we'll discuss that later. But what does this mean, like, initially? Because a lot of this stuff is going to happen in 2024. Like, are we going to see, like, tours and stuff there? Like, um, these, like, these um, these um, gunshot start, like, um, shoot, not like the, the tea times. It's like a, a shotgun start or uh, teams or something like that. Or now they're wearing going to wear shorts on the PGA like they did on Live Golf or something like that. It, it, it's it's interesting to, to watch out though. Where, how do you see this playing out? Because who knows? And we don't even know all the details yet. Well, to be honest with you, I, I attire is really the last thing I, I could care about. You know, I, I think I, I, if I'm going to watch golf, I'd much rather see an entertaining product with the best players in the world than, you know, I could care less if somebody's in shorts or slacks or a t-shirt or a collar polo shirt. I know that, you know, there are certain guidelines that's, as to what's acceptable or not. Um, probably prefer them in, in polo shirts at the very least, but um, you know, it wouldn't be a deal breaker for me, uh, you know, regardless of what they're wearing or anything. So, you know, live re re relaxing those rules, you know, that's kind of the least of my concerns here. It's it's more a matter of the integrity of the game and how the game is actually played and, you know, 72 holes and, and all that, that I would prefer that they probably not touch that. So, you know, like you said, it, it's going to be interesting. Again, I don't follow, I'll always watch the big tournaments like the Masters and U.S. Open uh, the Open Championship, I, I'll use the formal name, not call it the British Open there for my uh, golf friends. And of course, the PGA Championship, you know, I'll always watch the four majors when I can and uh, some other tournaments throughout the year um, would ha certainly help if Tiger Woods could could get back to a point where he was playing a little bit more regularly again. And I don't know how much longer he's got left, but he alone uh, certainly, you know, moves the needle in terms of what the ratings and, and viewership figures are going to be. So it's uh, it the, the sport is certainly at a crossroads at this point. And it's going to be interesting to see now that kind of out of nowhere overnight, we've gotten this news that the two sides have come together again. Where do we go from here and how is this going to affect 
uh, the future of a sport and and one of the more popular sports, uh, individual sports at, at the very least uh, in the United States here and all around the world. Yeah. So obviously the biggest points are, you know, the, obviously uh, the proposed merger comes after, you know, obviously both both leagues have been embroiled in lawsuits with antitrust claims. And then obviously the deal would end all uh, the pending litigation from all that. But the biggest thing is, you know, obviously you look at Phil Mickelson and you look at him because he was obviously one of the biggest proponents of all this. And he comes out the big winner in all this, I think. And all those golfers that say, all right, I took my money and then I won. So, um, but, you know, for someone that's like you took on, obviously you obviously the PGA Tour wasn't perfect when all this happened. But it's like you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, he took on the golf establishment and he won. But obviously this this is not obviously the game is better when he's in it because obviously a lot of people love Phil and all the things that he did and throughout his career. Obviously, Phil burned a lot of bridges and I don't think a lot of them are going to be coming back. But, you know, he came out. I think uh, a lot of those golfers came out on the, the winning side of it. And the other person we have to mention in this that didn't that wasn't a part of any of this today is Greg Norman. The, the person that really was the spearhead behind all this, he didn't have a comment. And it looks like from um, reading a lot of reports out there from, you know, from Bob Herrig and all those other golf uh, golf experts out there, it looks like he will not be a part of it. It might just be like a figurehead, like what Richard Petty is to Legacy Motor Club. Yeah, you know, again, we can debate the moral aspects of taking money from Saudi Arabia all we want. But, you know, from a strictly business financial perspective, these guys seem to have come out big winners in all this year. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's again, just kind of mind boggling to think about how, uh, where we were not even one full year ago in the comments that Jay Monahan was, was making in that clip that has since resurfaced and asking players, have you ever had to apologize for being a part of our tour? Like the live players have had to apologize for it. And now everybody's back together again and they've secured the bag. The players that stayed and defended the PGA tour have not. And they come out uh, financially maybe not complete losers in all this, because there is certainly still a lot of money to be made in golf, but you know, nothing that can compare to what they were offering over on the live side of things. So, uh, you know, again, you know, the the whole Phil Mickelson, of of course, I think, you know, you ask people probably the second most recognizable name, certainly in American golf, uh, the last two to three decades, you know, after, after Tiger Woods being number one, of course, you know, to have him, uh, you know, come under fire for some of the things that he said and did when, when this whole thing was going down and now uh, things be brought back together again, you know, we'll see how his public image, what, what kind of turn that takes now and everything's kind of falling back into place here. But, you know, you know, again, I mean, there, I feel silly saying I'm speechless given we've been talking for, you know, whatever it is here, 15 minutes almost about this already, but you know, it, at the same time, you know, you really, it, it's hard to come up with the best words to describe you know, the, the, the news, if, if you're putting yourself in a PGA tour player's shoes here, what, what would your reaction be to everything that's gone down? I mean, it's just, it, it's gotta be gut wrenching and, uh, you know, dev- devastating to know that you fought for this tour, you defended this tour. And now it seems that the commissioner sold out to Saudi Arabia, just as he was telling his players not to do as recently as just 10 to 12 months ago. Yeah. So is uh, what, well, how does the saying go? Like, um, do as I say, not as I do. As I think that's how it goes. There you go. Um, Cause it's like, they've defended this tour. It's like, okay. So, you know, we, they, they were told like, these guys are never coming back. And then, you know, the things that you tell them not to do, you go and do the same thing. But then again, it, you know, obviously it, it shows you that, you know, it shows you that the power of the dollar is obviously, you know, very, very strong in this country and golf's going to make a ton of money off of all of all this. And obviously I think golf fans will win in the long run because all the golfers will be on the same, at the same place at at the same time. And, you know, we'll have to see how that all goes. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens, happens next year for all these, all these tournaments, how they're all going to coexist because now they're all one entity We'll have to see what happens there. But now I want to kind of shift focus on what's next. It's like we, you know, this is like the first like big, you know, sport that obviously, you know, the PIF or the public investment fund is is kind of done. I've seen this floated around today uh, on Twitter by like guys like Andrew Brandt and all that stuff. 
it's like, oh, they're not done. They're going to go after every other single, you know, league and all that stuff. And uh, they're going to put poor money into it. Like, you know, could they offer like NIL money or all that stuff? Like, what, what, what like what, it, it's an interesting place for a lot of sports that are, you know, as, as the sports get more expensive, as the, you know, as money turns into more money and all that, what, what do you think happens next? That's a very good question. And again, I'll, I'll speak on, you know, the two sports probably that I would be most familiar with, which are, you know, formula one and, uh, and soccer. Um, you know, we, we, we have this discussion every year. I mean, I say every year we've only been going there for a few years, but every time formula one comes back to Saudi Arabia, um, you know, there is the moral aspect of, you know, the human rights violations that are taking place in this country. Is it really worth racing here and, you know, doing what we can to raise awareness while we're here, but at the same time, taking money from this country that, you know, has a, has a very poor human rights record. Um, you know, I, I know people have brought the NBA under fire for, you know, sim- a similar deal with China. Um, you know, and I guess that's kind of the, the question of hypocrisy here uh, being brought back as well. You know, those that have, those that have been the loudest calling out Saudi Arabia haven't had too much to say about the NBA in China. Those that have called out the NBA in China tended to be silent on everything going on with live golf in Saudi Arabia. Um, so again, you know, it, it's not a new issue in the world of sports by any means, you know, the whole saying keep politics out of sports, I think is, you know, really wishful thinking because there, there really hasn't been a time in human history where something political hasn't you know, infiltrated the world of sports in, in some way. Right. Um, but, you know, it, we like I said, you know, the, the question always comes back up when when F1 race is there and you're seeing in soccer right now with the transfer window starting to open this summer, you know, the Saudi pro league going after, you know, after they just secured Cristiano Ronaldo for a couple of years and the amount of money that they're paying him and the amount of money that they're offering to other top players all around the world and trying to lure Lionel Messi over. And the question is to what his future is going to hold. Um, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. This isn't just a, a one sport issue or a golf issue here. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to build, they're trying to build their own thing with a number of different entities and a number of different sports. And, you know, I think that, you know, money in some ways can only get you so far, but at the same time, you know, we, these are, these are numbers that are outrageous that, you know, don't make any sense to the common man like you and me, Casey. Um, you know, these are, offers and numbers that are just absolutely staggering and mind boggling and things that we've never seen before and really kind of unprecedented situations. So, you know, it's, it's going to be an interesting period of time here to see where things go. Uh, Cause I think there are still a lot of question marks as to how far they're going to be able to take these things going forward. Um, do you think Jay Monahan survives all this? Because I, I know I, I may have asked this before, but you know, in the coming months, I mean, you know, people have called for his job because obviously it's like, you know, in, that, in the the meeting today, we saw that you know in Canada where they're where they're playing in the I believe the RBC Canadian Open. Um, just to have that, it's like, how do you see like the next few months playing out in the short term for the PGA Tour? Because obviously, in the long term, people are like, oh, this is, you know, this is going to happen. We can't control it and all that. And but in the short term, it's like, well, I don't know. You know, Casey, if, if this isn't a fireable offense, I don't know what it is. You know, I mean, just the the fact that the players really, in particular, the ones that, that I think got screwed the most in all this, because they they had all this going on behind their backs, and you know, it's not it's not like Monahan didn't know what he was doing. Obviously, he negotiated this deal to the point where they struck a deal and announced it today with zero knowledge from the players. Um, you know, if this were if this were a job that maybe weren't as visible or didn't have as much money involved in a similar situation, like absolutely no question. Uh, you know, you you almost certainly would not survive, uh, you know, in, in terms of being able to keep your job after this. But I mean, again, this is the world of professional sports. And sometimes, you know, what we think ought to happen isn't what happens in reality. So I I, I would be very surprised, given the nature of this situation, if there aren't at least movements that gain some steam to try to get Monaghan removed or fired or whatever. But, you know, again, I, I don't know that I could guarantee it and again i i, I want to be clear don't know the world of golf nearly as well as and i know the world of racing or uh even a couple of other sports here but right I, I would be very surprised if we're having the same conversation a year from now like i don't know if he's going to be fired tomorrow but you know is he is he going to be able to weather the storm and come out of it and survive and continue to be the commissioner for years to come i don't think so i think that's going to be it's going to be very difficult to see a path forward for him to do that all right all right 
Well, Ben, thanks so much for coming on and talking about this. Um, uh, I'm sure we'll have you on at some point to talk about, you know, whatever else is going on and either in the world of sports or in the world of racing. So um, uh, enjoy Sonoma this weekend and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Casey. I got to say, I, I really enjoy getting the chance to talk about other sports here because as much as I'm a race fan and, uh, you know, that's kind of been my passion growing up and, you know, now hosting the grid shows, I, I am a fan of pretty much every other sport under the sun and uh, follow a lot of them quite closely. So it is nice to get these opportunities from time to time to venture out a little bit and talk uh, some other sports as well. So thank you for the opportunity. And right. like I said, you know where to reach me. So uh, anytime you want to have me on, uh, just give me a call or a text and uh, we'll try to make it happen. All right. Sounds good.